Well, we had the vet out this morning to pregnancy check these two heifers with the ultrasound machine. It's very early in the process. It's only been 32 days since we artificially inseminated. This is about as early as you can really do this, but we wanted to figure out if we were going to need to get a cleanup bull around for these two heifers or not. And as it turns out, he's not seeing definitive signs that they're pregnant. There's a small chance that they both could be, and it's just not visible yet at this early stage in the game. But it definitely looks like it's going to be wise to get these heifers exposed to a bull to make sure that they've had every chance to get pregnant. Uh, I talked to my guy that we normally get bulls from, and he doesn't have one around right now. So I've got to kind of figure out what I'm going to do. But we definitely need to do something because it looks like it's not a slam dunk that these two are pregnant right now. These two beauties are going for a ride first thing in the morning as soon as the sun is up tomorrow. They don't know it yet, but, well, I guess they know it now. I just, whoops. Hey there, thanks for turning down my road. If this is your first time here, my name's Carl. My little brother and I both work for local farmers full time, but we both also farm together with our cattle herd and our hay operation. Everybody's involved, from the smallest to the biggest. If you don't have the joy of farming yourself, I'd love to help you experience it through this channel. Whatever your background, you found the right place. This is Dodge Brothers Farm and Ranch. This will work. Good grief, girls. Do, huh? You girls ready to go to the Heifer Hotel for a month? All right, here we go. I'm on the way to a friend's house that I am jokingly calling the Heifer Hotel for the next month or so because he's agreed to let us bring these two heifers over and uh, turn them out with his herd. They have a bull running with them right now that is a really good bull to use on heifers. Um, he's a purebred Angus bull and he doesn't throw really big calves. The number one goal with heifers having their first calf is to have the calf and have the heifer and the calf be alive after the birth. They don't really know what calves are, do they? Uh, well, that's because they were a calf and they haven't seen any calves since well, they were yeah. one. <laughs> That's what I was going to ask you. Were they, they running with the cows at all? Well, that went really well. Anyway, it's going to be weird not having them around home for a while, but this is what we got to do. You got to get them bred, otherwise there's no point in having them. Here's a little footage from the beef show at the county fair in my hometown this week. I always get excited about coming to the beef show every year. My brother and I both showed beef cattle when we were in 4-H. And then, uh, obviously, we raise beef ourselves, so it's exciting to see everybody else's animals and see what they look like. It's just a lot of fun. What an amazing week at the fair. The weather's just been fantastic. I've got a little footage from the tractor pull the night before last to show you as well. This was pretty cool. Well, it's definitely fly season. So my brother and I are up at the corral at the pasture at dad's and we just uh, set up a little fly treatment station for the cows. Check this out. Most of you probably remember this mineral feeder that we made out of this old semi tire and a 55 gallon drum. We went to the farm store and bought a couple of these fly bullets, hung them from a couple of U clamps over top of the barrel opening here. So the cows have to stick their head in between we just got done charging the fly socks with insecticide using a little hand pump sprayer. 
Uh, they're not as far apart as they look. So when a cow sticks her head through here, she's gonna get it on her face, which is exactly where she needs it. Keep the flies off her eyes from getting pink eye and everything. And the fly bullets actually hang just outside of the barrel. So it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be dripping the liquid into the mineral if we get a little too much. I think it's just gonna work pretty good. We'll see. What? Are you ready to go? <laughs> Looking good, man, those barrels are still floating perfectly. Well, I'm up here at the north storage shed and this door and the whole corner of this building has been all rotted out for the last couple of years. It just gets worse and worse every time you open the door. Take a look at this. So the whole door frame and the whole corner of the shed has just kind of been coming apart. And I don't think it's going to be all that complicated. I was inside here looking at it. Basically what we've got going on is the door frame is rotted away on the bottom. And then back here, the board that the door was attached to is actually broken and split. But the corner post of the building here is still actually in great shape. So all I got to do, I think, is tear the door out and the framing around it and just kind of reframe a new door in. Because this door is, the door itself is not in great shape either. But I got a really good helper with me today. His name is... Andrew. Andrew. Is Andrew going to help film for me? All right. Sounds good. Here you go. Gross. That was all full of like dirt and mouse turds. He really doesn't know how to do it. Well, I'm still working on this machine shed door project. I've got it all torn apart now. I feel like I haven't got anything done, but the way I've torn it apart has taken a long time. Let me show you why. So there was a whole bunch of electrical wiring here coming out of this breaker box going up this rotted off frame and over across here. And I had to take all that wiring apart. And then I cut the cross brace here where it crossed the door frame. I'm cutting off the ends of these rotten boards here. I've cut off the, the bottom board there where it's still good. And now I'm getting ready to start putting everything back together, framing the door in. My goal is to be able to save all of this weird colored yellow steel. And I think I'll be able to cover up some of the damaged steel here with corner trim when I finish it all at the end. Right now I'm in the process of getting the last of the nails and all the junk off of this post. And then I think I can start piecing everything back together and getting ready to build the door frame. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you the other hurdle with this project. There's no electricity up at this farm. So everything is being done on the tailgate of the truck, drawing the line across the board with a square and then cutting it with a reciprocating saw. You gotta go with what you got. The machine shed project is currently in a rain delay a very, very much appreciated and long awaited rain delay. It's been like two or three weeks since we've had any real rain. Okay, I never get this lucky, but I found this door laying in the other machine shed back at the home farm that we had bought for a hog building project and ended up getting a different style door. And this door fit exactly perfectly in the opening on the steel on this shed. I mean, how lucky is that? Oh, that's real nice. Love it. Well, check it out. I could not be happier with how this project turned out. I do have to get some gravel and some dirt and fill in that gap underneath the bottom corner of the shed there so animals and such can't get in. But look at this. 
Bought this nice latch at the hardware store, heavy duty Stanley latch that I'm gonna put a padlock through. The door opens and closes really nicely. So on the inside, you can really tell a farmer did this, but it's gonna work just fine. I mean, I just scabbed new boards over the ends of the old ones. I just scabbed this together. There's a two by four, treated two by four underneath holding the bottom two together. I even used some of these little brackets where I ended up having to butt one board up against another one. And then I still gotta get some uh, planing done on that bottom board so I can fit another one by four underneath the step there on the door, the tread plate. But overall, I'm very satisfied with how this whole thing came together. It's a very sturdy installation and it'll last for quite a few more years this way. I used all treated lumber around the door because a little moisture gets around there and starts to rot it again. We'll be right back where we were. And especially along the bottom, that's always gonna be wet because it pretty much sits on the ground. This project has been needing to be done for a year or two at least now. I'm glad to have it done. Well, I've got the planter all washed up. It's ready to go in the shed for the winter. We flushed RV antifreeze through the conceal system, the uh, nitrogen application system on the planter so that we won't freeze anything up over the winter. Now this is a 12 year old John Deere planter and I'd say it's still looking pretty good. I know a lot of people are thinking about trading planters this year. And about six years ago, we were also thinking about trading this planter off and it was gonna cost about $90,000 to trade it off on a one-year-old used planter. And we only spent just over $40,000 completely rebuilding this planter and all the things that make it work. Take a look at this. We replaced our old fixed row cleaners with these Martin Till floating row cleaners that are controlled by the Precision Planting Clean Sweep system. That's an air cylinder on each row cleaner that allows us to control how aggressive that row cleaner is being from the seat of the tractor as we're going we can even lift them all the way up if we want to we replaced the factory john deere meters that were driven by a hex shaft that ran the whole length of the planter with these precision planting v-set meters that are driven by this electric motor that gave us row by row shutoffs so we didn't have to plant out into our end rows and double plant corn anymore and most importantly what i think is the coolest thing is we replaced the factory John Deere airbags that provided our down pressure with these precision planting Delta Force. That gives us individual row by row control of our down force. And we can also lift up on each row unit if we have to, if that row unit is too heavy for the conditions that we're in at the moment. Now, yes, that was a pretty big overhaul. That was a pretty big check to write, but it saved us almost $50,000 over the cost of trading this for a one-year-old used planter that would have had all of the exact same outdated technology that this planter had at that point. You should really take a look at precisionplanting.com slash Carl and see what kind of awesome rebate deals you can get. If you put Delta Force or V-Drive or Speed Tube on your planter, you get a rebate on each row. If you put all three of them, you get a big rebate. And of course, if you put two of them, you get a pretty big rebate as well. You really should check it out. Well, the planter is unhooked and tucked away back in the shed until next spring. Now, I just got to get this wall of technology taken down so that we can see through the window again really well for grain carting. There is a lot going on here. And I think what I'm going to do, I don't normally do this, but I've got the wires all tied together so nicely. I think I'm just going to unhook all these monitors and grab a few more zip ties and kind of tidy up the wires hanging underneath the railing and just leave them all in the tractor because I can take all this stuff out but man I'd really rather not I've got it in here so nice just how I want it we'll see how it goes there that is much better man that's nice okay looks like we're gonna get some more storms here and I gotta say that does not look very good that's that whole thing is rotating and look at that little funnel forming over on the left side and i think there's another one in the middle oh boy 